All right, ladies and gentlemen, we shall begin. Pen roll. Pen roll. Pen roll. Or you could try to voice it out. It didn't, then it goes like beatboxing. Oh, can you beatbox? <laughs> no. <laughs> What's up? I'm Sam Maxson, a.k.a. Slammin' Sam. I'm a DJ, actor, philanthropist, self-proclaimed renaissance man. When I'm not in the studio, I'm diving into my hobbies and exploring many interests. With that comes my personal uncensored insights on anything and everything. Are you ready for it? This is The Slam Show. What's up, everyone? Hope you're doing great. Welcome to another edition of The Slam Show for January 23rd, 2017. I'm your host, Slam and Sam, coming at you. And yeah, tonight we have a special show because this is the finale prior to vacation time. Yes, I do have a life, and I do need to get out and traveling out of the country. So uh, we'll be back at the end of February with a new episode. But for now, we have tonight to roll into with a lot of good stuff with our special guests in the house. And tonight's episode is sponsored by Kinders and Martinez, hooking it up big time with the eating goodness. You guys have to head over there. Kinders and Martinez. Justin Kinder, what's up? Owner, CEO, he's the man. He's the one that hooked it all up, as well as Cindy, Captain Fantastic, part of the Slam Show crew, being able to make that all happen. Thank you there, Captain. All right, uh, before I get into anything, I'd like to introduce our special guest. And, but before that, I have to give a little props out to my main man, Rock Rage, behind the scenes. He he will be having his voice heard a little later in the program, but without him, there is no slam show. All right, let's roll right into it. Uh, first off, special guest to my nearest left. She is an awesome, awesome professional cosplayer, and I've seen her work. I just said, we got to have her on the slam show. She's going to be a great interview, lots to put on the table. Let's have a big round of applause for Lady Aurora in the house. Thank you. How are you, girl? Good, how are you? Good, good. Can you lift the mic a little bit higher so we can hear you? Can you hear me now? Yeah, bring it up closer. There, there you go. How you doing, girl? Good, how are you? Excellent, excellent. Thank you for being able to make it. Uh, we got into contact with each other, and mm -hmm. you are here. But you also brought a fellow <gasps> cosplayer, and... Yeah, I I looked at all of her information. You <laughs> yes. had to do a little dab there. <laughs> and she is just as worthy to being in the spotlight here on the Slam Show. Big round of applause for Sandy Navarro, everyone. <laughs> How was the drive from Redwood City? It was long, but it's definitely worth it. Thanks hey, for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. So you guys are here. Kick back and relax. We got a lot to talk about, but, but before I get into all that, I have a few things to point out on my end. Uh, once again, if you're not following me on social media, be sure to. <laughs> it is under the moniker I am slamming Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, all that good stuff. All right, this Thursday is my final broadcast for the Slam and Mix Show on Facebook Live. Be sure to tune in at 7 o'clock Pacific time till 10. It's a three-hour episode of a lot of good stuff. And, Sandy, I know you want to check me out over at the resident club over in Redwood City, but this gives you a chance to hear my format. So definitely tune in 7 o'clock on Facebook Live. Please. <laughs> yes, definitely. I will be there. Please, please. There you go. And this Saturday, I will be physically live over at Nika Lounge in Concord. You got you to gotta check that out. The, this place is off the hook. 1907 Salvio Street in Concord. And I'll be playing all the hits. Old school, new school. It's definitely a plus. So if you like what you hear on the mix show, Sandy, you got to make the trip back over here to Concord for Saturday mm -hmm. because it is off the hook. It's a really nice lounge uh, bar it's not mm -hmm. because a lot of people nowadays they like to have a more of a intimate setting versus mm -hmm. 
a big old rave, as we were talking about on the pre-show, all the glow sticks and everything. <laughs> so this is a really cool spot. Nick Lounge in Concord, Slam and Sam in the mix on the decks. You got you to gotta come through. So, yeah. Uh, for more information, hit me up. I'll get you on the guest list and make it happen if you're down to party this Saturday, January 28th. All right. That's my opening line. Let's get down to it with our special guests in the house. And these two young ladies, they've been doing professional cosplaying for quite a while and doing it right. And uh, I'm a big fan because I do it too. Mm -hmm. My fiance, she's involved with the community. And to find out more about it, you have to bring in the guests that have dived in to, to the degree that you guys have putting together all the outfits from scratch. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the thing that separates the novice ones from the pro ones because you're doing it the right way versus getting it from eBay and saying, oh, yeah, this is, this is me. Mm -hmm. And when you're entering the contest, they're like, oh, disqualified because you bought it already pre-made. You can't do that. But you guys are here, and I want to find out more about what makes you guys tick for the whole cosplay effort, uh, starting with you. Uh, Let's, do you want to go by a specific nickname? Uh, people co call me by Lady Aurora. All right. Um, I don't think a lot of them know me by my real name. Uh, Should we go yeah. by that? Yeah, go for it. All right. It's Jade. It's Jade. My real name is Jade. <laughs> 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 the cat's out the bag, ladies and gentlemen. You could call her Jade. But yeah, let's start with you, Jade, uh, mm -hmm. in terms of how you got started in the whole cosplay thing. Was there like a show or a particular person that you said, I want to be like her? Let's let's go back um, in time. I would say like, I'm actually not even from California. Where I'm are you actually from? from Guam. Okay. Yeah, so Guam is very tiny. So what's, we the, what's the language there? Uh, English. Well, there's a native the, language. The native language, the, it's Chamorro. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Can you speak it? No, it's, it's, I only know like a couple, like half a day means like, hello, welcome. Um, Do you know the bad words? <laughs> <laughs> I probably forgot those for a reason. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know how it is. It's like if you're like, I'm Filipino. Uh -huh. So everyone's like, okay, you got to at least know the bad I words. Know, I, know Filip I know some Filipinos because uh, I have uh, a couple of Filipino friends. Um, yeah. There's a lot of Filipinos um, and also the um, Guamanians. Yeah, that's on Guam. That's so I, I've made friends with a lot of Filipinos. So they kind of taught me some stuff, but you know, I'd rather not say it because I'm not probably not even seeing it right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you're honest. <laughs> yeah, but and at least you were taught. Mm -hmm. So since um, I grew up on Guam, um, they don't really have that big of an anime or even a cosplay um, community scene, mm -hmm. a community. Um, so I actually moved out here for uh, fashion design. Okay. Um, I also wanted to do costuming, so it's like okay, I could probably um, put in some like. You know, cosplay in there. So, like, so my first convention is really odd. It'll be uh, Yarkon. Yarkon is a more towards like a guy and guy convention. Mm -hmm. It's a gay convention. Okay. But it's like a guy and guy. Where was but this at? It was in that, the very first time I believe it was in Marriott in like um, San Mateo. Okay. Okay. It's like, that's my first convention. I was like, I don't even know what to expect. And there's like people making love. I'm like, oh God. You know, I was like 18. Oh dear. So it's like that's my that's when my um, wow. What an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's like when my um, con cherry popped. Okay. So <laughs> you went there already dressed, or you went there just to check I it out? I went there already dressed. And you were? Uh, I was Tifa from Final Fantasy. I was probably to try to. I I don't know how to sew that time, so everything was hand stitched. So it was just you buy some s uh, clothes from like Goodwill and just kind of cut it up, try to hand sew things, try to make it look as close as possible. Right. Since you know you're a beginner, that's how a lot of times uh, we start out. Uh, we could always get like secondhand clothes, uh, cut them up. Um, so of it also saves up some money. Uh, Makes that's sense. That's pretty much how I started for the cosplay. But if you want to go before that, like I probably say I went to like uh, anime expo, but I'm more as a attendee. I just went there to buy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Get your get collectibles. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, I, I didn't even really like thought about cosplay. I seen a lot of cosplayers, but like. At that time, like, oh, I want to do it, but I don't even know where to start. So when I started to really get into school, I know how to sew, then that's how it kind of progressed. Gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. So uh, definitely there wasn't any conventions over in Guam. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I know, like, a couple of my friends, uh, we still keep uh, in contact. They said that they 
trying to have more conventions. I think um, you just go back there and just start it yourself. <laughs> just a Lady Aurora freaking Guamanian. Yeah, I would love to. Cosplay like plane convention. tickets are so expensive. Are they? <laughs> yeah, they're like a minimum fifteen hundred. For round like trip, round trip. Damn. Yeah, and you still have to transfer. Like either Hawaii, Philippines, um, mm-hmm. Taiwan, or Japan. So it's like, I'm probably okay. The money is right there, but like it's just the transferring flight like from 13 hours and another seven hours. It's like you're, you're pretty much spending a whole day on a plane. And you got to pay the price going yeah. to Guam. So I was like, hey, can you come here? <laughs> 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 so that's a that's other alternative. My friends are like, uh, so far. I was like, it's far from me. <laughs> Okay, okay, fair enough. Sandy, how, how'd your beginnings in the whole cosplay world start? Yeah, so I wasn't a specific person or anything. <laughs> I was already a huge fan of anime, and I've been watching it since ooh, fifth grade. So I've been, I've been watching the, sho- like, the shows already. And gotcha. I was just you know on the internet searching for photos of my favorite characters, and I stumbled upon someone's cosplay of a, char- of a character. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my god. Click <laughs> and I clicked it, and it turns out this was a costume from a convention. And I was like, "Oh, what's the convention?" So I keep on clicking, and I found out that there's anime conventions You're that they exist. Clicking your ass off. Yeah, so I was like, click, "Oh my god, it's the best discovery ever!" But um, I kept clicking, and I found mm-hmm. out that there's conventions like uh, that people can dress up as their favorite characters. And okay. The minute I found out, I was like, "Oh my gosh, I gotta go." When's the next one? It just what happened that Fanime was the following month. So that was my first convention. Okay, and, um, so so mm-hmm. let's back up. Did you already have this this initial love for dressing up, or did no. this okay this just sparked it? This just this just sparked okay. it. Yeah. So Were I you was like just a fan of the shows, and then when I found out you can dress up as them, I was like, I gotta learn how to sew. <laughs> gotcha. Um, the good thing was is that my mom's a seamstress, so mm-hmm. she taught me how to sew. So the minute I found out, I called my mom up, be like, Mom, you got to teach me how to sew. <laughs> I want to be this character. And she's like, is this for Halloween or something? I'm like, oh, no. They're like, this is, I just need to do this for a convention. And she's like, all right. So she taught me how to make uh, a costume. And then mm-hmm. I, so I wore a costume my first an- my anime convention. And I got that cosplayer experience first thing. And Fanime was obviously, it was like a mid size con at that time yeah yeah so it's definitely a huge eye-opener and mm. i discovered the world of cosplay <laughs> so what did you go as i went as a showmaru from inuyasha oh my god uh he's a favorite ca- uh, favorite <laughs> anime character of all time and um obviously since my first costume wasn't that great <laughs> there's mm-hmm. a, there's a, like no photos online except for <laughs> cosplay.com that's like a place for old G's to have accounts and right, post right. photos. So I do have uh, photos there. That but, are floating. Um, that are floating yeah, around. But that's you not your best. Stalk me and find me. But find um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I made the kimono. I didn't. I didn't know how to make armor at the time, so I didn't have the armor. Yeah. Um, I didn't know where to get wigs. Um, so I didn't have a wig. So it was just like I was a mess. But I still had fun. People still recognized the characters. So I still got that that feedback and mm-hmm. just um, I was able to go to the gathering and so I, I got that experience and from there it just ignited my yeah it lit the fuse it lit the fuse yeah i mean we're gonna always have our humble beginnings oh yeah across the board if you think that you're gonna go in with everything in front of you just right then you're just totally being misled because you're you're gonna have to like not necessarily half-ass it but try it out because you don't know you don't know what to expect yes i didn't know what to expect yes (laughs) so it's definitely uh, that's when i learned about the whole art of oh you have to know how about how to do makeup you know you need to know how about wig styling you need to know how to sew and you know make armor and I didn't know any of that so I'm like wow this is like so this is a hobby of so many crafts gotcha. so that was so that was what made it so fun and what got me really interested well mom if you're watching <laughs> yes thank you very Thanks, much mom <laughs> <laughs> she hooked me up that's, that's awesome so you have all the setup right now you have your own sewing machine and yeah. everything uh-huh. so you're you're like set you're like I'm set that, that's what that's why jay's like yeah doing she has the bow like thing. her makeup down her armor's down like just not, there's nothing missing i was like oh god but definitely mom and dad <laughs> helped me because my dad does construction so he helped me learn how to work with wood and metal oh, and wow. plastic so, so it's all in definitely my mom and dad just teamed up and it was a good bonding experience too do you so. want to do panels <laughs> I got my mom over here. <laughs> she could tell you. That's, that's yeah. cool. That's really great. That's that how I started. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And as far as being able to know that this is your passion now, uh, has it kind of like distracted you from what you initially wanted to do in your careers? Uh, like obviously mm-hmm. the whole falling back on mm-hmm. job thing. How how are you meshing that, or are you doing this like 
full time to expand on it? Um, for me, I'm in. I'm still in the field of fashion, so it does help me with technical design, um, technical work, how things are sewn. So I still have to incorporate that skill. Mm -hmm. uh, for me to keep utilizing my skills, I still have to sew. So I still try to at least put some. Uh, if it's not cosplay, I'll probably say I'll, I'll still do fashion. Um, I'll still try to sew my own fashion stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so I still use it, I'll probably say, as a daily basis. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, okay. And Sandy? W for me, uh, my career is nothing related <laughs> to the hobby. <laughs> <laughs> I got a degree in animal science, so that's completely oh, wow. different. Um, I do have a passion for animals, and so I want to pursue a career uh, in that, uh, gotcha. in the sciences. So I still I still do that. Oh, as a vet or I'm not as a vet. I'm still in like the science field. Um, well, like to like do some mad scientist experiments <laughs> on freaking dogs and mutate them and shit. Okay, uh, not, <laughs> yeah, not like that. But um, that's you're like, like that's a good <laughs> idea. That's like a full matter alchemist moment. I know. <laughs> I like that. Like alchemy. <laughs> no, <laughs> that was the whole plan. Don't, don't talk about that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I actually have my uh, two separate worlds. I. You know, I'm in the corporate world during the day, and mm -hmm. then after work, I that's when I dive into all my artistic hobbies, and so I definitely have a double life going on. Kind of like Clark Kent, Superman. Yeah, uh, like <laughs> that, <laughs> that much of a difference. And yes. you're like this studious professional with glasses on, and when the cosplay light that shines in the air pops up, it's like boom, transform. Yeah, <laughs> transform. I think that kind of happens when someone talks about anime or comics. You're like, huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> I think that kind of happens. Like we kind of try not to talk about it because we're, we're all kind of nerd out when that happens. Like, what did you say? Anime? Comics? Did you, next episode? <laughs> yeah. Well, see, here's the thing. The whole cosplay community is so blowing up, mm -hmm. and everyone that wasn't into it maybe like five years ago are freaking stepping into the arena, and yes. that's and that's the thing that I love about being able able to interview professional cosplayers like yourself. Mm -hmm. the, the last show we had, we had a uh, makeup artist, Walter Welsh, where he freaking mm -hmm. puts together these magnificent mm -hmm. like outfits and he does makeup and all that. And previously to that, we had uh, Vic Knives, mm -hmm. uh, another female cosplayer. So this is something where we have to kind of educate people and say, hey, if you're gonna do this, you gotta do it right. You can't just go on eBay and purchase a freaking $200 outfit, you gotta freaking do it. You gotta manufacture it from the very beginning, from scratch, do some sewing, and make it yours versus mm -hmm. having something that everyone else has. So that leads me to the next question. How important is it for you to give your own spin on each outfit versus saying, I wanna make it identical to whatever's on print or the source material? Let's go start with Jade. Um, this is where it's kind of a little dark area of cosplay. Ooh, um, darkness. Because there's a lot of stuff <laughs> out there that, you know, fabrics don't match. Um, it's also like sizing might not even be to your specs. But I wouldn't want to say I agree with 100% with like if you want to be a cosplayer, you shouldn't buy things online. It might even be cheaper to buy it online than buying um, fabrics. Sure. Um, and make it yourself because you're saving some money, you're saving some time. Mm -hmm. But if you want to pursue and like uh, pursue a cosplay career and buy online, then improve that costume. Because I know like a lot of times manufacturing is mass produced, quality is not gonna be great. Then if you do get it, if it's not great, what can you do to improve it? Right. Um, but th would that make you of a less of a cosplayer? I don't think so. Um, Unless you're I you're entering a contest, and that's when they're going to rip so you apart. If you're entering <laughs> contests, I I actually competed. Um, what they ask for is pretty much uh, there's different stages, novice, uh, um, then like from ex ex um, expert, mm -hmm. then craftsmanship. So you kind of go down the line, but you could also you could also lie. You could lie. The dark like secret. It's because you there's no there's no way there's certain ways you could prove that person is lying. True. So, so it's, it's a white lie. It's yeah, a good it's, lie. Kind of like Santa Claus are, and the yeah. Easter Bunny. <laughs> so it's there, you could you could lie about certain things, but there's also a fine line um, if it's fair or not. Yeah. Uh, I know there's there's a, a way you could escape from that is that you do buy something online, um, just say like a jacket, but you alter it. As long as you alter it, you're actually okay. Okay. So that kind of like defeats yeah, the whole like yeah. I just 
bought it yesterday, put it on, and then alter it. So yeah, yeah. So okay, it's okay. It, there's there's certain ways you could probably escape from that area, but um, there it, it's it's a it's a kind of gray area. You can't really say you're you're not gonna be a good cosplayer if gotcha. you buy it. Uh, because a lot of times nowadays when people cosplay, it's uh, a hobby. They like to do it. Mm -hmm. um, they don't want to say they're professionals. Um, I probably wouldn't even want to consider myself professional. When you said that, I was like, oh, my God. I'm no, I was like, I'm not on no honor. <laughs> she's very, she's being very humble, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Because um, I, I would say I do also buy certain things online. If it's something very simple like a pair of jeans that you could alter, yeah. um, I'll go – to that far of a step, if it's something that you can't even buy, um, then you you're kind of forced to make it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's something that's you could buy like leggings, socks, jeans, uh, just a regular T-shirt, it's cheaper to for you to actually buy it. Okay. Then make it yourself. Gotcha. Um, unless there's certain designs on the shirts, um, certain seamings, and yes, you have to everything you have to do it yourself. But okay. Um, okay. I go for the cheap and. Um, less time <laughs> so uh, I'll probably say I will probably do that but I know like Sandy is like to the books um, she's amazing so yeah but also to add on what you were saying mm -hmm. would you put your own spin on that um, yeah. or would you leave it as is um, I'll probably say yeah, I'll probably put my own spin like upgrade uh, certain trims okay. um, certain fabrics I'll probably say I'll do put my own twist on it okay okay Sandy how how do you m approach that yeah, so I think that part of the hobby is to to make the costume. Of course, if you buy it, I mean, it doesn't make you any less of, any less of a cosplayer because part of the fun is to just dress up in mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, a big part of the hobby is to to make the costume because it shows like your dedication to the character, yeah, your uh, your creativity, artistic abilities. Um, at least for me, I always started I started off with uh, making everything myself. Uh, since my parents taught me the skill sets, I, it was easy for me to just um, uh, put it together. But I feel like uh, if I worked, you know, weeks or months on a costume and I finally get to wear it, it's very rewarding um, because it's like, well, look, this is my dedication to to the character, to you know, to the show. And when people give you that feedback, oh, oh I love your costume, it's like, oh wow, like I spent so much time and effort on this. So yeah, it's just, yeah. It's so rewarding. Um, but definitely, uh, for me, I try to ch stay as cheap as possible. <laughs> Cosplay can be a very expensive hobby. I you, know. You can imagine, like a lot of these characters are very elaborate with their co with mm -hmm. their outfits and mm -hmm, their props, mm -hmm. and it's just oh man, this could cost so much money. So I try to be creative on what I can use. I try to use scraps. I try to use random things around the house. Try yeah, to manipulate yeah. it to see if I can make a prop out of it. So I think that's part of the fun too. Is like just try to be creative. Try to make things in to something else. I, so I, I always enjoyed that part of the hobby of just trying to figure out how can I make this in a very unconventional way. Gotcha. And staying true to it or putting your spin, where do you stand? Um, yeah, so I do both. Um, I stay true to the character if I feel that um, there, that character hasn't been done enough, like if that character hasn't ha had a lot of um, exposure already. Yeah, uh, I try to put my own spin if that character is already very popular. Gotcha. It's like, okay, what's something this character has been done so many times? What is something like I can do that make it a little bit different? Like, incorporate something that emphasize their powers or their character, their personality. Mm -hmm. um, so I try to do that if the character is overdone. Um, but if they're not, then I'll stay true to the character. Um, so it really depends. But I yeah. like to do I like to do both. Yeah, because it would be kind of I don't know. Uh, it would subject you to kind of like, all right, you're gonna walk into a con. And you see a whole bunch of the same character. Like if you're, for example, you go walking in there as Wonder Woman, you see like 50 mm -hmm. Wonder Womans. Uh, that's, and everyone's trying to put their spin to it, but it's still the same character. Right. That's where it kind of, you kind of like have to take a step back and say, okay, could I have picked a different character for this con? Or it wouldn't matter. That's the thing all cosplayers struggle with because, mm -hmm. uh, especially you professional ones, because you guys are always changing and always coming up with new ideas. Uh, those ideas, which, what are the sources? Where, what brings you to the point where you're gonna go ahead and be this character and put in all the effort? How, how's that process? Yeah, so when I decide a character, there's several factors that go into it. First of it is the fandom. So do mm -hmm. I like this character? Um, is, am, I, am I a huge fan of the character? That's one part of it. The second mm -hmm. part will be a design. 
if I like the actual outfit the character is wearing. Because mm-hmm. I could like a character, but I don't like the outfit. It could be very like plain or something. So now, that's another aspect as well. What's important for that character? Like, does it does it have to have like a certain part of your body that expresses the best ah, like I see what you're getting yeah. at. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me... Uh, because I, I notice a few. It's like, okay, <laughs> I know why she picked that. Yes. For me, since I, I do makeup as well, I would like to do characters that have more... Uh, for more makeup. So more there's more manipulation of your... Uh, of my appearance. Right. So bo- if I have to use uh, body paint or if I have to use prosthetics or... Yeah. So that's definitely something that I really like. Even if I don't like the if I don't like the character or I'm not familiar with the show, I would still choose that character because I like doing characters that really manipulate my appearance. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that transformation aspect is very appealing to me. So I tried to do that. I tried to do s- try to find something that makes me look very different. She's like Mystique from X Men. <laughs> <laughs> I did that character. <laughs> yeah. So sh- like to add on to her um, topic was that she did a Black Widow where it transform uh, like. Bl- um, Mystique transformed. Mm. So she did like half of the face of Black Widow and the half of the face was Mystique. Okay. So that's her twist and her take on it, which is very amazing. Like, oh my God, I've never seen that before. You see a lot of Black Widows. You might not see a lot of Mystique, but you never seen both at the same time. Right, right. And you could play with that with photographers and the angles too. So it could give it that much more of a uh, a uniqueness to it. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Uh, Jade, on, on your inspiration end? Uh, I actually follow, if I like a character, I actually look at uh, more fan art. Okay. So um, it's still with that character, but still someone else's like um, taste to it if it's like it. Um, like my signature cosplay is Blake from Ruby. Mm-hmm. And I do every single costume of hers. Um, even though they don't show it in the, sh- the shows, if someone draws it, I'm doing it. I have to do it. It's part of my character. So that's the difference between like a lot of um, cosplay who just cosplay Blake and then there's me who cosplay every single one of them. Right, right. Yeah. Every single potential outfit. Yeah. Even if it's just drawn up, you'll, yeah, you'll do it. Yeah, if it's like, I even did like a punk version. I did oh, like wow. a kimono style version. Um, it's like when someone has like a good idea on the fan art of the character, it's so amazing. Um, I have to do it. That's why, like, I, I stay true to that character. Oh, there you yeah. go. That's uh, – and that's how you could develop a whole new character in a lot of ways where once you put your spin onto it, yeah. it, it could come to life. Yeah. And people embrace that. And uh, on the topic of how people embrace the whole, like, cosplay characters that present yourself, don't you love it when, like, the kids come up to you and they're like, oh uh, – can I take a picture with you? Or the parents will say, yeah, can my son or daughter come next to you? How do you, uh, are you open to that? Are you, are you receptive or is it, oh is it more God. like I'm busy? What, what's, how I do you? I don't even know if I had kids come up to me. I had more adults. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So I'm like, but kids, yeah. maybe. And, and some like, adults could be kids. Yeah, because like if for kids, like I think we do have some things that are held like at parks when it's held at parks, and yeah, there's kids, mm-hmm. um, especially if you dress up as a Disney characters. But I don't dress up as a Disney character, so I don't have kids around. Um, but <laughs> uh, there's there are a lot more of adults and teenagers. I wouldn't say that I didn't have a lot of kids that come up to me, sadly. Oh, <laughs> Sandy? <laughs> <laughs> I only have kids come up to me if I have a really big prop because yeah, they yeah. see that as really cool if something's really big. So, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I definitely, I like that because you could inspire them. If I yeah. was a kid and I saw that, oh man, I would have like, been, I would have remembered that and, yeah. you know, probably started that hobby way early on in my life. So I think I really like when uh, kids come up to me because you can be, you can inspire them and um, it's definitely an art form. So it is a hobby mm-hmm. that can distract them from other aspects of their life that um, they're struggling with. Um, mm-hmm. It can, it's definitely a great outlet. So I, I love it when kids like come up to, uh, to take the photos or if parents, um, if parents support that and they, you know, they bring their whole family, that's even better because mm-hmm. it shows that this whole family, like a whole family is supporting. Cause I have, I know people who, you know, their parents don't support what they do or they don't understand. So to see a whole family there, that's even, you know, it's even better. And I try to, you know, be as interactive as possible. So to give, to give them like, like a, a good experience of the hobby. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's very important to connect with the children. A good friend of mine, he dresses up as Spider-Man. He has a, com- a nonprofit organization called Heart of a Hero. And what he does, he visits uh, 
terminally ill kids in hospitals mm -hmm. and at their homes. And he's been doing this for the past two years. And it's, it's been a phenomenal thing where the kids, obviously, Swire Man's a notable character, mm -hmm. right. but the, the impact that you can make on children uh, is, is incredible. It's just by being able to see a character that you can embrace or someone that you feel is like good, mm -hmm. it, just, it just makes everything that much more better for the child. And that's where I wanted to, to find out your guys' feedback because uh, he's been doing it again for two years and it, it's tough because when you go into these hospitals and they tell you the story about these children and you find out, okay, they may not have too, too much mm -hmm. more longer to live, it, it, it's a weight that you have to carry and you have to go in there with compassion and empathy, but at the same time, you know that this person is, is gonna be gone. And I commend, his name is Ricky Menno, by the way. Mm -hmm. I'll send you a link to his, it's his page. But he wants to go ahead and start like developing the company where it's gonna be not just him, but other people involved in his foundation to go do these visits. And that's something that I'm considering for myself to help mm -hmm. him out uh, when I get my outfit all done moving forward. So uh, yeah, uh, that's kids. Kids are very important because I like you were saying, yeah. Sandy, uh, you're inspiring them <laughs> and you're also helping them. Uh, Jade? No, I think I, I did see a lot of uh, YouTubes and uh, Facebook posts about a lot of um, Disney characters trying to show up with um, be them being frozen, mm -hmm. um, showing up for like little girls. So it actually does make their day. You could see like in, in their eyes, like, oh my God, like that character is right here. I'm holding her hand. She's yeah. talking to me. So yeah. it does actually make a huge difference. Yeah, yeah. So Would that be something if you were given the opportunity to, to go visit and just to be able to touch children and yeah I think so. yeah definitely and I think now that you know anime is becoming more mainstream mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, more people recognize the characters if you do main characters so I think that's definitely another aspect of how we can make create more exposure of the hobby not only that but also to impact other people yeah so I think that's a, yeah that's definitely a great option yeah awesome awesome now getting back to the whole convention thing where we talked yeah. about kids and <laughs> stuff like that as you were saying mm -hmm. Jade the adults, yeah. they come, they're scrambling past, moving people to the side to take pictures with you. Uh, go in depth. I know sometimes that some of them might be a little bit too aggressive, might not have the best hygiene, uh, but yet they want to take a picture with you. Is it something you're comfortable with, you try to work through, or would you rather not deal with that? Um, you would just hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think one of my coworkers was uh, suggesting we put uh, the people who work at the con put like little travel size deodorant packs in their little goodie bag. Maybe I was saying this over and over again on many shows. If I had a vending booth for deodorant, I'd make a killing. I don't think it's like <laughs> I don't know if they know. That's the thing. Yeah, so it's, yeah. It's like we we go there, but it's just they just don't know their own smell, I guess. Um, but if they want, I mean. It's like they're, they're kids, so they want to make their day. You just take photos with them. It's like it's two seconds. Mm -hmm. done. So I don't, yeah, just hold your breath. Has <laughs> anyone did like some perverted move on you for a picture? Because um, I'm, I believe they have. I probably had blocked it off in my memory. <laughs> you always, always, always have a friend with you. Yeah. Always. So that would actually make them like less um, um, to do that to you. Mm hmm. Um, or have a secret word that I shared with Sandy. Um, anything that's kind of out of the ordinary. Like, man, I'm craving for cabbages or something like that. <laughs> or like, this tofu is annoying <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> so you just make that great, make it creative. But um, but if the person's being creepy, you know, it's either you tell him that he's being creepy or you just kind of have your friend save you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when we had Vic Knives on the show, mm -hmm. she mentioned about her whole creep experience. And I don't know if you guys seen the episode, but yes, she mentioned she yeah. mentioned about like some guy said, I want to take a photo with you. And right when they were about to snapshot it, the guy grabbed her and lifted her up and it kind of gave her a little uh -huh. peekaboo of her underskirt like mm -hmm. in that moment. So it was kind of timed well. Yeah. Um, I think she said she that was like one of her uh, earliest con too, right? Yeah. So nowadays we, uh, if you do wear skirts, we call uh, we 
we tell each other to kind of wear safety shorts. Yeah, safety shorts. So now we have safety shorts. Yeah. So all you creepers, we have safety shorts. Yeah, so you're, <laughs> you see shorts. Yeah, you yeah, just you see shorts. You're, you're not going to see a thong or any. Nope, not yeah. anymore. <laughs> we have combat <laughs> skirts. We have safety, like safety pants and everything. So we're, we're, we got that covered. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sandy, uh, your experience with uh, suspect individuals, how did you deal with that? And do you have any to share? Yeah, so um, I usually have my boyfriend around, so that really helps <laughs> deter <laughs> those kind of people. But right. I've obviously, I've been doing it for 12 years, so I've encountered many types of people. Right, right. Um, so usually my mode of, you know, of interacting is, you know, since when there's usually one, one person taking photos, another person taking a photo. So I'd be like, okay, I have, I have to do another photo now. Or something like that usually works um, because they're like, okay, so they make it quick or... Um, but I uh, definitely, like Jay said, have a friend around so you can, you know, get some extra help <laughs> right, right, interfering. Right. Like, yeah. usually you have a friend, like, oh, can, I, can we, can you take me to this or something like that? Something distracting. Uh, so that, that, that definitely helps having a friend. It, was there any moment where you knew it was kind of like a creepy moment and he uh, tried to manipulate the situation, like, like the before mentioned uh, Vic Knives situation where, okay, can you take it like this or anything where it's more revealing? Um, I've had had requests, but simply decline, <laughs> you know, <Really? laughs> you know, say, like, just say like, oh, how about this? You know, offer other suggestions of mm -hmm. like different types of poses that will right, work. Right. So, can um, you bend over? <laughs> My skirt's too tight. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or create excuses about mm -hmm. your costume. So that's something I, I do also mm -hmm. is like, oh, I actually cannot bend that way because my costume would just mm -hmm. like just. But you can, but work. you just, you know, it's yeah. a freaking so creep I would move. just make up like all these random excuses that like, oh, I can't turn that way. Or I can't go over there because this, I can't move much in this costume. So gotcha. it's really like, there's, you can come up with so many things that works. That, now, has anyone like followed you like throughout the convention and you knew it was like a creep mode? Oh gosh, no! Actually, I haven't had anyone okay. just like follow me for a long time. But It'd probably just be me. <laughs> <laughs> and you were in what costume, so she could like remember, like uh, okay. I was posing as a photographer. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was. Oh wait, it may have been Rock Rage. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, that's fantastic. Glad that you guys come out of that unscathed because. Uh, there are some horror stories, but like you mm -hmm. said, sometimes you call it upon yourself, depending on what outfit you're wearing. Mm -hmm. yeah. If it's too revealing, obviously, it's it's not the AVN Awards. It's freaking a cosplay event. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to work with knowing that there's going to be children around and also having that balance of being able to portray your, your cosplay outfit the way you want to and not have any limitations with that. Now, when it comes down to like what you want to do in the future, Outfits, uh, certain conventions. Uh, what do you, what do you guys foresee? Uh, we'll start with you, Jade. Um, I need a lot of friends to help me. I probably say if I want to foresee like future conventions. It just depends on like uh, for if you're asking for um, for cosplay, I actually plan like three months ahead of time. So I don't. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah. Because you're talking about creating your costume from scratch. And um, there are people who actually do month. Three weeks, two, one yeah, week. Yeah, but it just <laughs> depends on your schedule. I mean, if you have no no other obligations, yeah, you dive in. You you'll be surprised with um, these diehards. They actually stay up all night. Mm -hmm. um, they won't give up on their costume, and they still look great. They actually even bring their sewing machines to hotels. So even so, just to complete it. That's they're, awesome. They're dedicated. I can't do that. <sighs> Pop I in that sleep. Red Bull, uh. and you're on it. I'm getting old. I need my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you're not getting old. You're 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 gaining levels. Hey, exactly, exactly. You're you're like Yoda. You're just gonna hang around for 900 years, that sort of thing. Sandy, how about you? What you just described me <laughs> pretty much. I don't plan, uh, you know, a lot in advance. Mm -hmm. I had taken a lot of factors like uh, my financial situation at the time, right. how much time I have left. You know, I'm not going to do something complicated if I only have a week left. So I really, there's a lot of factors that go into um, limiting what I can do. So I really have to work with um, those different aspects. But so I, I am a last minute planner <laughs> when it comes to cosplay. Really? Yes. So you could like pop one out. Like, what's the shortest amount of time that you pop, popped out a, a really quality outfit? Shortest amount of time. And what was it? I would say about uh, three days. Mm -hmm. 
I would say that's the shortest amount of time. Uh-huh. Um, but I'm the kind of person that would stay up all night <sighs> and uh-huh. not eat, sacrifice everything <laughs> just to, just to make it on Die time. Hard, I'm Take my you. sewing machine to the hotel <laughs> to finish it up. I'm None that wrong kind with of that. Person. <laughs> now, what was that? It's very detrimental <laughs> to my health. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I mean, it, it happens, and I just have to work with what I got, and it usually works out. You know, when you when you're really dedicated. Um, it, 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 there's always a way. Okay. Yeah. Do you mind sharing what character that was? For that three day, it was for Anime Expo, and it was for a Death Note cosplay. Okay. Um, I didn't have time to sew, so I had to um, buy the clothing that was similar to it and then make um, uh, alterations, and then mm-hmm. I had to create prosthetics, which is... Um, yeah, I see that you're very great at mm-hmm. doing prosthetics. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so prosthetics don't take too long. It really takes like a, a full day. Mm-hmm. So I chose a costume that wasn't too complicated, but um, I wanted to add my own twist to it. So I had to create prosthetics the day before, and it dried overnight, so it made it for the next day. Mm-hmm. So I had time to paint it in the morning. So it just it worked out. But um, but yeah, so that, that's the one I did for that. It was uh, three days. Gotcha. Cool, cool. And Jade, your shortest amount of time putting together something? Crunch? I actually don't have a crunch. You, are you prepared? Yeah. Oh, you, so you won't. Three months ahead. Really? You, yeah. You're not one of those no. that you're like, you either no. need prep time or you don't do the convention. Yeah, pretty much. I w- if I can't make it on time, like I have to really plan. Like I'm for sure going to this convention. I'm for sure bringing this one outfit. Gotcha. So I plan way ahead. So if I can't yeah. make it, I'll just bring whatever I made previous um, times. But for sure, I, I can't do that. It, it I, I like my sleeve. <laughs> See, that's cool. <laughs> I like my sleeve. That's cool. It's, it's <laughs> like yin and yang. Uh, you have Sandy doing her <laughs> own universe of how she wants to handle the cosplay effort, and you have <laughs> yours. It's it's fantastic. And, and Rock Rage, man, you should be ecstatic. Man. You, got, you got anime fans right here. And Rock Rage, he, he just... We were talking about that earlier, weren't we? Yeah, we were, we were talking about uh, just an- anime in general. Um, and I'm going to use this opportunity now and just fixate this camera a little better. Um, real quick, um, the popularity of anime as of now is pretty much like from Ruby and a lot of the newer shows. Mm-hmm. But I'm old school. I, I, l- I yeah. love a lot of the old <laughs> school animes. And I'm really a big fan of like even the clamp era of oh, uh, la- the yeah. ladies that actually took over the artistic, you know, integrity of animes. It's like, no, we're doing it our way. So I, I do appreciate animes that were like Ray Earth, Escaflone, <gasps> a lot of the old schools. That's 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 where I grew up. I don't get a chance to talk about this. That's why I'm on the <laughs> mic. Because, like, tr- from Trigun to, you know, Cowboy Bebop, that era of the 90s, like, I've watched so much. And uh, But from going to conventions, I see a lot of the newer stuff. And I think it's just a sign of the times of whatever's new is popular. But do you guys think about doing, like, a character reviving you know, a character that's already been at conventions before or something that's, like, really near and dear to you at all? Um, go ahead. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I am. I have not cosplayed any character. I've been doing it for 12 years. I've never cosplayed a character that was from a really new series or recent series. I always cosplay characters from very old animes. Um, just because, you know, I, I feel like the old animes have, you know, very extensive plots. They're very elaborate. I'm not sh- I don't know, this is just in my opinion, but I think that the newer animes are, I don't know, they're not as creative. I fan, don't fiction. Know. fan fiction. <laughs> yeah, so I don't feel as, like, I don't feel as, like, um, connected, you know, connected. Right? Like, yeah. it hasn't impacted mm-hmm. my life, but those old animes, like Cowboy Bebop, mm-hmm. that's a classic, really impacts your life because of, a, you know, the characters are so, you know, they do, l- they spend a lot of time with character development. Yes, um, yeah, So yeah. I feel like I, just, I have more connection with the shows. So I definitely try, t- I always try to, cosplay the old characters and try to put my own spin because they've been overdone. Mm. I try to put my own spin on them so that it can make them interesting again and get people to, you know, look back into those kind of anime. So I, I'm always for the old school yes. shows. Dragon Ball Z. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, DBZ has been around, I mean, for s- quite a long time and it's touched, you know, hearts and that's why it's even got a, you know, a reboot or it's continuing mm-hmm. because people, no matter what convention I've ever gone to, there's always someone rocking a Goku with like yes. a, a wig, you know, um, or so, you know what I mean. That was one of the bigger names, but there's so many uh, off-branded shows that have helped create 
the realm of anime that might not get en- enough attention or cosplay attention, but they you'll always see their t-shirts. You always see, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's mm-hmm. still there breathing. I just in, uh, really enjoy seeing stuff like that. So I'd like to see in the future works like that of yours and other people's because I think that's really you know amazing. Um, when I went to SAC Anime, we saw a lot of uh, Harley Quinns and mm-hmm. the new version. Yeah. You know, like I had to like give props to one of the OG Harley Quinns. Like, yeah, I'm the original, the original red and black. And she's just like, yeah, I'm the only one. I'm the only one, Mr. J. It's all the <laughs> new ones, you know, and it's so funny. It's like, but I, 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 um, I'm not going to knock the people doing that because I think they enjoy that new version of character anyway. But we don't need 20 <laughs> Harley <laughs> Quinns. Um, I think it's because like it's, it's an easy cosplay people could purchase compared to a full bodysuit. Body suits a little harder, and you have like the whole face paint, um, the headpiece. Uh, where the new modern version, you have a wig, jacket, some booty shorts, um, fishnet tights. You draw in the tattoos. It's a lot more easier. Um, I think body suits are harder to also breathe, depending on. No, the no, I agree. That's why I, I, you know, it, it also gives off. And some people disagree, but I give it gives off like an attitude. It gives off a more sh- like. Like, you know what I mean? Like, here's yeah. Harley Quinn. Mm-hmm. You don't, you don't mm-hmm. get, like, a clown, jokey lady, whereas the Joker, we know he's a killer. He's, you know, he's serious. People take him serious. So it at least gives her, um, a m- I don't know, not grimy, but a more, you know what I mean? Like, a more, like, uh, like someone you wouldn't want to mess with. <laughs> Dirty. Yeah. Well, not that. But she just gives her a more stronger, it's not, it's not a strong, powerful <laughs> female image, but it gives her an attitude that's well needed, at least in that movie that they're promoting. So. I think I can see why people kind of gravitate towards that. But, uh, yeah, I love the old school. I, I love – not even old school, even some of that were a few years back because I had to re- I had to learn what Ruby was when people were talking about, Ruby, you haven't seen this. And I watched it. I'm like, this is a trip. This is new. You know, it's fast-paced. It's crazy. Um, each of the characters have their unique dresses and things like that. But it's popular. I can see why people love it so much. But I can see why people can gravitate towards it too, because it also builds from those old school elements, yes. and that's why it grows. So yeah, there's. I mean, there's so much um, anime that people can kind of uh, bring to the table. But I would like to see some more outlaw star, or some you know, some 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 uh, princess Mononoke, which I saw someone actually dress up as the the wolf queen and stuff like that. Any suggestions for their future outfits? Oh. <laughs> Take, uh, go ahead, Rock Rage. You're going to make a difference. You know what? We talked about this earlier. One of my favorite animes, um, hands down. So it's, um, I have two of them, but one. And you know what's funny? It's going through my head. It's like, all right, Gunsmith Cats, Rally Vincent, and Minnie Mae. Look it up. You guys can do it. Gunsmith Cats. Right. I heard of it, yes. Yes. It was a short-lived uh, little anime, but it was about two female bounty hunters uh, basically living on their own and outsmarting everyone that tried to stop them. And it's one of my favorite. Just... Um, hands down great great story it's like two strong women you have uh, guns you have cars and everything they take serious like um, not so much the anime but they take serious like the driving they take Mm. like the shootouts real so if someone shoots at someone they're gonna duck they're gonna actually feel the weight of the explosion on the wall and they're gonna be like oh god that's a gun so that's one of those those you really get those animes now now you can be punched into space and you'll be back in like episode two (laughs) It's like One Punch know. Man. Uh, well, one, well, one Punch Man, <laughs> phenomenal animation, and there's always one at a convention too. You know, who's always like, about to punch someone and they run away because they know they're gonna die. But that's the fandom <laughs> that people love. You know, to enjoy. Um, but yeah, so, something like I don't know. Look at me and Sam. What do you guys foresee? What do you guys see us as? Hmm. Okay, who's Deadshot? Me, I can play. Uh, this <laughs> Will, Will Smith Deadshot. <laughs> I can see. That. I can see that. I, I don't know, Sam. Well, think about it. Think about it. Yeah, see, I'm a mystery. You can't really put a character on me because I can be a lot. Are you very concerned Mortal Kombat? Oh, oh yeah. I've been, I've been off. I've been suggested that many times. You should do one. Okay. Yeah. Which character? You look like a Sub Zero. Oh. Okay. Ooh. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, do that. Sub Zero, come over here. Wrong one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's 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 Scorpion. Oh, bomb, bomb. <laughs> Scorpion. What does he say? What does Sub Zero say? He just he doesn't say. He says swoosh. He's yeah, he just does yeah, he just does sound the, the Sub Zero um. freezing thing. Oh man. All right, I'm gonna hold you up to that one. Okay. Uh, 
outside of the whole cosplay thing, do you guys have any other hobbies that you guys dive into? Um, I'm into, I, I do a lot of fitness now, um, since I work in a company that does swimwear. Okay. Uh, so we're, like, we have fashion swimwear, we have competitive swimwear, so it just encouraged me to do more fitness, so I've been, um, doing a lot of yoga, because they have, uh, yoga classes for free. Oh, wow. Um, so I've been doing yoga, um, on my free time. And then do jogging. I know, like, one of my coworkers, uh, he does marathons, so he's trying to encourage me to do marathons. So I've been, nice. I've been trying, but, you know, tw- 20, was that 23 miles? 23 yeah. miles? Yeah. Oh, shoot. <laughs> we did, we did beta breakers, like, three years in a row, and that's not even close to, yeah, to the so marathon limit. And by, at the end, I'm, like, freaking struggling. I'm like, oh, shoot. I don't know. It's, it's. If you could do it, great. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. But like, I, I don't know. It's for marathon guy. <laughs> Try to do like maybe a half marathon. Yeah, um, I know. I used to be in, uh, used to be able to do like five Ks. Um, yeah. Back home, mm-hmm. but uh, since you know college hit and work and life, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <At> age. <laughs> in an age. <laughs> uh, but I know like Sandy's been keeping up with her fitness. I'm like she's, the I like I don't like the hearing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she does like really good fitness and she dances she dances so she she really keeps fit so well she's a vegan she has to yeah. be yeah <laughs> so i'm 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 growing up there like i'm trying to do like more yoga gotcha so i'm um, so, trying so to be healthier too um that's another reason um cosplay is good so you have to keep fit yeah yeah, yeah. you gotta mm-hmm. kind of like stay within that same yeah. framework of the character yeah, it's also like when you make stuff to your size, mm-hmm. mm, if you gain a little and lose a little, it shows on your costume. Yeah. So that's that's another downside of that. So. Yeah. Well, see, that's good. That's good that you're conscious of that whole appearance thing when it comes down to the, the cosplay mm-hmm. situation. Uh, th- it's for a uh, personal. Um, I think each person is different. Some some people um, do it for like the cosplay. Some people like don't really care. Right. Right. So I mean, you you'll get. You, you will know that you will get some backlashes. Yeah. Um, like, if you're too fat, you're too skinny. If you're too tall, you're too short. Yeah. Or you're, or you're different color and skin. So, yeah. Like you'll, you'll never get satisfied with, like, two people. So. No. There's always something people are going to critique. Yeah. Regardless. As it's long as you're satisfied with yourself. Exactly. Yeah. As long as you're happy. Uh, I will say real quick, um, mm-hmm. what's something that also that happened recently, even at SAC Anime, um, they had the geek fashion show um, that was run by Duggery Grant. And what he did was actually get several women from ver- very different sizes and different uh, ethnic backgrounds and brought them on the stage and they all had their chance up there. And I just want to thank Sack Anime and all the uh, supporting fans that came up there and just rocked it. Because each of the ladies did, you know what I mean? They did their thing and I was like amazed because my friend Becky, she was up there too. She, you know, she's a, she's a big black woman and she went up there, she did her thing. I was so proud of her and she rocked it. Everyone's like supportive. So I think I just want to mention that, but I think there is something like that. I do understand like when people go and they have that confidence to try something and then, you know, um, they put on a costume and things like that. So it's very um, commendable when people do that. Um, but I just want to thank those that are actually pushing for that to get that out there. That's all. Yeah, so that's, I've been in the geek fashion show for a couple years now, and that is exactly why, you know, mm-hmm. I support it is because Dougery Grant is all about, you know, embracing all body types. And he specifically makes sure there's all body types, all colors, all ethnicities. Yeah up there and the thing is like not only is it impacting the models but also the image you know that beauty is not one specific size yeah um so that's something i really like about that event in particular that second anime hosts is that they're um more embracing and accepting of the different types of people that's out there different types of beauty and when i talked with the models um you know some of them is their first time doing this and you know it really changes their their idea of beauty because they always thought oh models have to be tall skinny and so when they get to walk and when they get to actually have that experience it really helps their self-esteem their confidence and you can see it and they just have when they have their moment on stage they're co- they just you can see their eyes go like they're just having so much fun they really enjoy it and i love talking with them after the show and just you know fi- um, asking about their experience and they always tell me like oh my gosh like i would never thought i can do this and that I'll be accepted to do this. And um, it's definitely one of the girls, um, she had a le- um, both her knees, she had surgery. 
So she was wearing braces, and she still waddled. The, um, Doug Rue was like, okay, you can wear a dress that covers them, covers your knee braces, but you can still walk. And she was so happy, and she got to do it. And it's just like that's, that's how accepting, you know, this, that event is of, of everything. You know, no matter what, you're, you know, if, you're, if you, you know, like doing this, if you, you know, w- if you want to do this, we're going to give you the opportunity. So that's something I really, really respect. So that's they try, yeah, They try to make it work. Yes, much, yeah. they, they will make it work. And that's something that's, you know, it's because this experience has, it has a big impact. That's wonderful. Uh, so closing out the hobby thing with you, obviously, oh. Jay <laughs> mentioned that you're a fitness fanatic and dancer. Any, anything else besides that? Yeah, I'm a violinist. Um, oh, so wow. Okay. <laughs> you should have brought that here. We'd like you to play some tunes. Oh, man, you should have told me. Oh, I should have brought it. Next yeah. time, next time. But, um, yeah, I've been playing the violin for a little over uh, 10 years. Can you play um, by ear? Uh, yeah. So if I was like to go on a piano and start playing, you'd just jam with me, right? <laughs> we'll, we'll just have a duet. It'll be, oh, it'll be man. Awesome. Uh, it's next not time, a, man. It's not in a car or anything. <laughs> it's not, but Damn. next time, next time for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've been in symphonies in the past, so I, I just, it's another escape for me. Um, oh, so you can just, kick ass. <laughs> Holy shit. I guess. It's like multi skill. I'm I telling guess. you. I got to make um, a note of that. <laughs> well, I put you in the studio. <laughs> I would love to. Um, I also dance. I'm on a dance team. Mm-hmm. So I, I compete with dancing, with Latin dancing. Okay. So that's something else that I like to do. Salsa? Yeah, salsa and bachata. Okay. Yeah. Are you familiar with these dances? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a DJ, so I play all that music. Oh, right on. Yeah. <laughs> and I have quite a few friends that do all the dances and so forth. So, yeah. Nice. Well, I, I'm not yeah. a, I'm, uh, I'm a novice. Got to show you <laughs> some moves. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's where I have to get my A game up. Right on. That's cool. So dancing on all levels. And also violinist. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, and that's yeah, the fitness, and right. that's about okay, it. Okay, you don't play video <laughs> games or any of you two or anything? Uh, I do, but I won't time anymore. Because if you have to wake up at 4.30 a.m. every day. Oh, shoot, you're a diehard, I'm huh? A it's diehard. Once you get into it, it's like you can't stop. Yeah. I know, like, there's a one game coming out. Um, I'm, I'm real, I, I'll probably buy it, but it'll probably sit in its little packaging <laughs> for a little bit <laughs> to like maybe like a holiday and I'll break it open. But <laughs> I, I know I have to hold back. Um, well, you, you and Rock Rage can talk about that after the show because he, he I'm telling you, after the show, he's going to talk his ass off with you guys, but expect it because he's a great guy. But we got to close out the program with a shouts and plugs. So let's start with uh, Miss Navarro. Uh, Special thanks, uh, family or anyone. Go right ahead. Yes. Uh, first, I want to thank Jade because um, <laughs> for for mentioning me and having me having me here. Really appreciate it. Um, we are working a lot together on projects, and um, it's really I really feel flattered that that she feels that uh, sh- that my, my my skills are good enough to be you know interviewed, and um, it's it's really nice uh, that I can share you know my experience. And so I like to thank Jade for giving me the opportunity. Okay, that's it. And also, <laughs> also, I mean, my, my I was like, family, how about my, definitely, uh, your family, yeah, my, your my, dog? My, my, my parents, uh, just because they <laughs> actually, you know, helped me do exactly. this hobby. They're, they're, the, they're the ones that taught me all the skills that yeah. I needed to do it. So definitely my, That's my your parents. DNA. <laughs> my DNA. <laughs> um, uh, you, of course, for having me as well. Um, and really everyone that I meet at conventions because they impact my experience. Awesome. Um, you know, this is not something you can do by yourself. You know, it really takes... You know, I have to ask questions to other people and, um, and, you know, they also give me that feedback and it's just, it give me the memories and it's just, uh, yeah, so everyone I met, I conned my friends and so it's. Okay, there yeah. you go. Cool, cool. Jade, take it away. Uh-oh. Oh, she has a Oh, list. my goodness. Um. This isn't one of my <laughs> co-hosts' Truth's best friend because that's all he has. He has a freaking list. Um, I would like to thank Calvin. Um, he's my fiance. Um, he's known me for like a long time we've probably been dating for like 10 years that's awesome um so and my ruby girls uh they their commitment dedication anna jerry and jaria uh kelly my photographer he's like my mentor he's always there working um with me um and with my other like models so he's also my uh, creativity um dan is my first friend i met at the cosplay First friend. First friend. <laughs> first friend. <laughs> I'm going to use that from now on. You're my first, first friend. friend. My first buddy, um, Don and Kevin, because they said to mention their names, because not all guys are creeps. 
There you go. Um, I would like to um, thank Leanne. She's the one that recommended uh, me to you. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen her for about probably two years, and I would like to see you again. Please come back. Um, all the photographers who took the time to take um, the cosplay photos of us. Uh, if I will name them out, there was like a lot of them. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then, of course, Sandy for joining me and um, Sam Rockridge yeah. for um, hosting and everything. Thank you so much. Cool, cool. Right on. Okay, I'll go ahead and close out the shouts and plugs. I'd like to thank, first off, Rock Rage in the back, making it all happen behind the scenes. All the Slam Show hosts, Lady Sage, Joe Corzo, uh, Cindy, Captain Fantastic, Dr. L, Mike Ill, and all you guys, thank you always for supporting our sponsored caterer tonight. It is uh, Kinders. And also in the house, our special guest, I want to thank you guys. Sandy, Jay, thank you very much for being on the program. I wish you the very best and future successes. And hopefully you guys can come back. And yeah. next time, they'll have uh, violin. the violin. Duet. The violin will be in the house. <laughs> That's for sure. And all of our sponsors and affiliates, especially VW here in Oakland. All right. For myself and everyone here, we'll see you on the next episode next month. Peace.